and there is a danger of not taking advantage of the harvest. There is a danger. There is a danger. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 8. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 8. 8 to 11. I think so. 8 to 11. Let's read through. The Bible says he provided her meat in summer and gathered her food in harvest. It means that there is a time to provide meat and there is a time to gather harvest. So if you miss the timing, there is a danger point. If you don't attend to it at the right time, there is danger point. If you don't attend to it at all, there is a repercussion. So give me that scripture quickly. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Give me verse 11. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and they and thy want as an armed man. One of the greatest danger is that Harvest can be turned into the moment of rest if you're not careful. You understand? Harvest, time, can be turned into the moment of rest. That you rest too much, you can enter into slumber. Somebody say here. Can I talk to you some more? There are times that your shop is filled with goods. Because your shop is filled with goods, you begin to feel that you have arrived and you go into a slumber. Before you know it, poverty follows you while your shop is still filled. There are times you gain victory in certain areas of your life. But because you celebrate the victory and over celebrate the victory, you enter into comatose. Where before you awake, you have find out that what you celebrated has become a snare to your life. Celebrate, but don't over celebrate. Are you hearing me? Don't over celebrate over the work. Don't celebrate the victory over the job. Let me give you. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. The Bible said, The slogan will not plow by the reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. So if you don't do anything when harvest comes, you have nothing to harvest. He said the sluggard will not do anything by the reason of cold. And because he did not work, the Bible says he shall beg, beg for food. So the moment of harvest is a moment of labor. It's another moment of labor. Anytime you hear people cry, oh God, take me to my harvest, take me to my rest, take me to my harvest, my harvest, my rest. Brother, harvest is not the time to sleep. Because if you sleep in harvest, you have nothing to bring home. So I'm dealing with the dangers of not taking advantage of the harvest time. I'm dealing with what? The dangers of not taking advantage of the harvest time. Danger number one, it causes rottiness in the kingdom. It causes rottiness. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Joel chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. He said, go and tell these people, hear ye indeed, but understand it not, and, ye, and see ye indeed, but, no, this is Isaiah something. Isaiah 16, verses 9 and 10. This is not what I'm looking for. And it, sorry, Isaiah 16. Therefore, I will bewail the weeping of, of Jazza 
and the vine of Sibma, I will water thee with tears, O Heshbon and El Eliela, for the shouting of thy summer fruit, and for the harvest is falling. The fruit was shouting that harvest time has come, but the people ignored the cry, and suddenly the tears, their tears came. So anyone that ignored the time of harvest will cry. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Give me the next verse. And gladness is taken away. And joy out of the plentiful field. Harvest is supposed to bring gladness. Harvest is supposed to bring joy. When you ignore harvest, it turns to tears. It turns to rottenness. It turns to pain. When you leave fruit in the field, don't the fruit get rotten. What is supposed to bring pleasure has turned to rottenness. It begins to stink. It begins to smell. So for you not to identify that is your moment of harvest, for you not to take advantage of the season of your harvest, you are bringing rottenness into your life. Are you understanding the, what I'm saying now? So it's very important that you read the field and know when the field is white. It's very important. You reap the you, 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 you study the field and know what is, when it's ripe. Many a times we blame church. We blame pastors. We say they have not prayed enough. But they brought a season for us. But we didn't take advantage of it. So the rottenness of it is what returned to us. I'm not sure you heard me. Because the harvest you didn't harvest. Is either another harvest or the harvest turned to a rottenness to you. Joel chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Joel chapter 1. Oh God, help me. Be ye ashamed, O ye. Wine dry dressers, vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley. Because the harvest of the field is perish. The vine is dry up. The fig tree languishes. The, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Anytime you don't take advantage of harvest, you bring decadence to the body. Whether spiritual harvest or physical harvest, whether life harvest or kingdom harvest, I told you about life harvest. The Bible says everything that pertains to life and godliness has been given unto us. Life harvest is what you want to harvest, your job. If you don't harvest the job, you are the one that will be suffering. If you don't harvest the business, you are the one that will cry. If you don't harvest the promotion, you are the one that we cry. So, what do I do to attract the harvest? First of all, identify the season. Know when your time for harvest has arrived. No. Take advantage of it. I told you, I said, turn everything into a pruning hook. Turn everything into an instrument. Lines must fall onto him, please, and places. Praise the name of the Lord. So, you not taking advantage of harvest can bring rottenness. Number two. Danger number two. It causes the hungry to invade your harvest. Job 5.5. 5. It causes the hungry to invade your harvest. Let me let you know. What you are careless about, somebody is hungry to eat. Did you hear me? If you leave that mango on the tree while the mango is ripe, you are not preserving the mango. You are telling the birds of the air to invade it. There is someone that is hungrier than you that is waiting for your harvest. So why not take advantage of the harvest? Are you understanding? So the danger is that they're hungry. Job chapter 5 verse 5. They're hungry. We eat up your harvest. Who so harvest? Who's 
whose harvest the hungry eat up and take it even out of the tons and the robber swallow up their substance. He does not wait for the thing to mature. Even when it's inside the tone, he will go for it. So be careful. Protect your season of harvest. Don't be careless with your season of harvest. There are testimonies you don't share. Wait until he mature. If not so, the enemy will eat it up. Stop making too much loud noise. Wait first. He said, even in the tone, he will go after it. So protect it. Protect it. Protect it. You just got a contract. You went to the village to celebrate. Two years ago, I learned that one of the richest guys from our, my tribal, my tribe, was killed. And I got to know that at that time that he was killed, he just hit a multi-million dollar contract that we made him into a billionaire. I just, I just, I'm not too sure of that testimony. That's why I'm careful with the figure. What I was actually told, that he just made the first one billion dollars. I'm just not too sure. That's why I just, I just, I became modest. Then went home to celebrate his billions. And it was his burial that they did. Don't allow your harvest it's not every harvest that you expose. It's still dead field, live and fulfilled. When he come home, we will see it. When he's in the field, protect it. So don't only understand the time. There are Joseph brothers that don't want to hear that Joseph dream again. So no need to share. As I'm talking to you now, I am about to make my first one billion. When I make it, I will let you know. Make it first. And you don't need to let them know. They will see it. Are you hearing me? Say we are braggadozing in the spirit. In the times where I, I exist, you don't brag anymore. Those days you brag, people help you. These days you brag, people kill you. There are no Rubens and Simeon to ask you to be brought out of the pit anymore. There are no Rubens. There are only men that say, leave him there, let him die. They are not profiting from your death, but they are excited that you died. I'm not sure you heard me. He said, don't kill him or let's profit from him. This one said, no, leave him there, let him die. So no Reuben, no Simeon to advocate for your coming out. So it's better not to enter the pit. And it's safer not to talk. How are you fine? What is happening around you? We trust God. Or we believe God. Or we thank God. Ah, what's happening around me? Oh, you have no heart. As I'm talking to you. English. When you finish speaking English, you will come back and speak Idoma. You will know when you are speaking your local dialect, thinking that everybody understood what you are saying. When problem hits you, you will know when you say, <laughs> you will speak your language without knowing. And you will assume that the person you are talking to heard what you said. It's the heat that is much. So to avoid that, keep quiet. Number three. 
Are we number three now? Did I give you the scriptures? Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 7, you can use that. Ezekiel 18 verse 7 also, you can use that. Now number three, you lose your season of reward. The danger of not taking advantage of harvest is that you lose, you lose your season of reward. You lose your season of reward. Harvest time is a season of reward. So when you don't take advantage of harvest, you lose the season of reward. Anybody that folds his hand during harvest becomes hungry. But during harvest, there is abundance of food in the city. Throw or false. When there is harvest, you see food littered on the street. You see food in the city. But anyone that folded his hand, that never took advantage of harvest, will never have food. That's why anyone that does not take advantage of a season will never have the testimony of the season. Every season has its testimony. This season is a sensitive season. Take advantage of it so that you can have the full reward of it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20. Isaiah 23, verse 3 and 4. Jeremiah 28, sorry, chapter 8, verse 20. The harvest is past. The summer is ended and we are not safe. Why? Because when the harvest came, they did nothing. So harvest has passed. They still think they have time. You know, there are people that when the motion is on, they still stand to say, I have time. Praise God. I saw where an amateur 100 meter guy was running with uh, Usain Bolt. And uh, Usain Bolt, they say, on your mask said, go. Usain Bolt stood. And the amateur guy ran. Ran about 50 meters or so. Then Usain Bolt followed, thinking he will overtake him. Before he realized, the guy was on the finish line. That time you took, somebody will overtake you. Take advantage of it at that season, at that moment. Behave as if there is no time for anything anymore. When it comes to season, be rugged about it. Step in as if there is no tomorrow. Even your village people will give you way. Are you hearing me? Don't be sluggish. Don't think that harvest time is forever. Harvest time is also a season. It's for a moment. It can come and go. Give me the next scripture, please. I think I called the scripture. Uh, that should be Isaiah chapter... 23, 3 and 4. Isaiah 23, 3 and 4. By great waters, the seed of Siho, the harvest of the river, is her revenue. And she is a mat of nations. By great waters, our revenues are in great waters. But hear what happened. Be thou ashamed, O Zidon. For the sea hath spoken. Even the strength of the sea, saying, I travel not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men, nor bring up veggies. Even the sea is bearing witness that it's time. Then you are here complaining that there is nothing. You are asking for what the sea does not produce. What it produces, you are going to a mango tree and you are looking for orange. Are you sick? The sea is telling you, I know they produce virgins. You are going to demand virgin because you lack understanding of what to get part time. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He said, I see produces things, but ask me for the right thing. Don't go asking me for the wrong thing. He said, you lose the reward because you don't understand the times. Then you go asking the tree to give you the wrong thing. You can't go, no matter how prayer you pray like a prayer mantis. 
You can't go to Orange Tree and, rece and receiving guava there. It's not possible. So what am I advising? To avoid the danger. Plan the writing. To reap the writing. And act the right time. Plan the writing. To reap the writing. And act the right time. You are not married. They are saying if you are here, trusting God for the fruit of the womb, come out. You came out. Uh -uh. Fulfill one first before you get the other. The river does not have place for fruit of the womb. It has place for husband. So come out for husband. They say, ah, there's somebody here, you are having headache. Not because you hear there is healing and you have back pain, you came out. They were not talking to you. The spirit available is to, there now, is to heal headache. So don't go and add to what you don't have. So de stop demanding what the tree didn't carry. Hey, Pastor, you won't understand. The Bible says God will do exceedingly abundantly above that which you think or imagine. Hey, I am here so that I can receive exceedingly abundantly above that which I think or imagine. Oh God, give me car, give me car, give me car. How much is your salary? 7,000 naira. You don't need car. Then the words you say, give me Jeep, give me Jeep. Then the words you say, Range Rover, Range Rover. You don't need it. Are you hearing me? What do you need? You need keke for business. So you say, Father, give me keke so that I will put it for business to improve my income. Nobody, they carry Range Rover, run transport. Even the fuel go finish you. By the time you carry somebody from here to Transamadi and back, and he pays you 2000 you have eaten the fuel of 5000 So it's not economical. So instead, why not ask God, give me keke to do business with. With keke, you can grow. So ask the tree to give you what you had planted. Don't go asking for what you didn't plant. See, God is a God of system and order. He can jump protocols quite through, but the protocols must have a reference point so that tomorrow when the court of life will judge him, he will present his case justfully. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I need the wealth of uh, Mike Adenuga. I need the wealth of Mike Adenuga. Can you, don't look for what will not make you to sleep. We'll leave that for another day. Say if you can drink the cup. There's a place of drinking cup to every breakthrough. Number four. The harvest becomes wasted. If you don't take advantage, the harvest become, becomes wasted. The harvest becomes wasted. Joel chapter 3 verse 13 to 15 and Jeremiah 5 17. The harvest becomes wasted. Joel chapter 3. Uh, put here in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. So if you don't put in the sickle, you become a wicked person. You become a wicked person. You become a waster in the kingdom. Are you with me? Are you following at all? Number 14. Verse 14, sorry. Verse 14. Verse 14. It's a multitude, multitude in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Then verse 15. 
He said, the sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Why? Because they have already given you a sign of season. But because you did not do anything, they are withdrawn. They have withdrawn. Your lack of decision has made them to withdraw. The person did you one year, two years. He says he's looking for money. Tell him, don't worry. When you get the money, you come. Five years. Like university. <laughs> First way they go to university, go and graduate now. Say you are doing five years relationship. Now university. Say no, that there is no money. He's looking for money. Most of these stories, when you get money, you go and marry another person. So tell him, go. When you get the money, come. At that point, your life can continue. Why? Because some people are stoppers in destiny. Some people are unnecessary covering. Listen to me. Anytime you are engaged with a man, there is a covering over you. So anytime a fresh man comes, he sees the man beside you in the realm of the spirit. So don't allow somebody to cover your future because he's looking for money. Tell him, don't worry. When you get the money, come back. If you are ready to take a step of faith, take a step of faith. If you are not ready to risk it, leave me alone. Let me follow my God. Maybe one good man will still come to my life. There are things that are done in a season. The season does not repeat itself. You graduated. Instead of you to get a job, say, I want to be CEO. Everybody wants to be CEO now. Whether you are selling shop in one small, uh, uh, what do they call it? Your complimentary card is bigger than your head. Everybody wants to be CEO. That's the latest. You told them small, I am CEO. You told them small, I am CEO. What are you CEO in? <laughs> Let me tell you something. For you to be successful in life, people must teach you how to obey instruction. And people must tell you to do what is not convenient for you. And people must control your life. And people must insult and step on you while you still keep your cool. Any day that you cannot be insulted, that is the day you fail. The day that nobody will tell you, Oko, you are very stupid. Come on, go and do the work. And you are still smiling and say, thank you, Oga, and still going to do the work. If that day never came in your life, wave success, bye-bye. Many years ago, I lost my kid sister and I rushed to Kano to see my parents. And the church where I was working, I wasn't, I'm not paid. Twice in four years, they gave me 5500 Twice they gave me 200 full-time pastor i'm not a part-time so i rush to greet my parents for the loss of my kid sister i left on a thursday i didn't know that my pastor is expecting me to return on a sunday i left lagos for kano it takes a whole day to travel that journey so i travel night arrived in the morning that was on Friday. So my pastor was expecting me to travel night on Saturday and return back. He didn't tell me. But out of me knowing that we resume on Monday, so I traveled back, but we had a breakdown, so I couldn't arrive on Sunday. I arrived on Monday morning. On arriving, they didn't give me transport to travel with. There was no sense of sympathy that you lost somebody take this money. 
I met a sack letter waiting for me, and my pastor was telling me, welcome, not condolence, welcome. Not condolence, telling you, ah, how, how was it? I was handed over a sack letter. And I, while he was handing me over a sack letter, I, I was giving him an apology letter that I could not meet up to return. And we were like exchanging the letters. Now, what, why I'm sharing this story is that the next thing was that I noticed a sack letter. I held him by the leg. He said, leave. I don't need you. I said, to whom shall I go? In a place where they are not paying you. Meanwhile, somebody had promised me from UK that if I can pastor their branch church, that church we are pastoring, we are no more than 50. But the branch church I was being given from UK, there are more than 150 adults. So I'm going to be senior pastor to my senior pastor. Why? Because for me to pastor that size, I am senior pastor to my senior pastor, but I held my pastor's leg. I said, to whom shall I go? He was dragging me on the floor. I was following him to beg him that I'm sorry. I told him I have nowhere to go. I have nowhere. I have burned the bridge behind me. God sent you to me until he said it's time. I'm not leaving. I was sacked. I was still there. The wife came out and saw the incidents between me and him. She started crying. She begged him. Say, leave this boy. He walked away, returned letter and said, uh, go and resume office. I said, thank you, sir. I never felt bad, not in my spirit, not in my heart, not any day I ever regretted that incident. Until men correct you, you cannot go far. You want to be CEO. With your pali, of six years. Hard strike. Eight years. NYC. Nine years. Now mercy you read. Just because you graduated from university. Does not mean they taught you everything. I didn't say anything. Let me say it again. Just because you graduated from university. They didn't teach you everything. Until a primary school leaver who owns a business, who is controlling money, employ you and is speaking English like Igbo and is still commanding you and you are still saying, yes sir. You have not learned anything. Calm down. Life is big. Bigger than you. Calm down. A homie a graduate of mass communication. Mass communication people, they shop, they sell plates. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. A whole me, a graduate of linguistic. Calm down. Linguistic people don't bomb five children. They don't go anywhere. Certificate their house. Calm down. There is more to life. Allow life to teach you. Allow men to instruct you. Allow men to tell you, sit down, and you sit down. Allow men to tell you, stand up, and you stand up. If you can survive in an organization where you are answerable to, then you can survive anywhere. But when you have control of your time, you do things the way you like at your own time, you can never go far. The rich man has no supervisor, but he sits all night making wealth. Then when you see him wearing short liquor, walking in the morning, you don't know that where you are sleeping, he made his money. Calm down. Calm down. You never graduate. You are everywhere. It is it. It is I. It is I. It is you. It is I. It is I. It is I. It is I. Your uncles that have been there in the village, are watching you. You are just an undergraduate. You are, you are threatening them with your, your success. They will kill you. Calm down. Hide yourself. 
until time. Hide yourself. Sometimes go to a village as a poor man. Save yourself. Let me talk to you some more. Save yourself. Save yourself. Now your husband, now they control the money. Now you reach past your husband. Save yourself. The man now get the millions. He, the, he humble. You when they, now when they give you top money, now you go come out two hundred thousand inside. Your own big, you big past the man. You are the one commanding everybody. Come on, get out, sack you, I fire you, I try and fire you, fire you, fire you. <laughs> Calm down, Madam Fire. <laughs> are you with me, somebody? So don't waste the harvest. Finally, where I stopped, you become a reproach. To our father. When you don't take advantage of it, you become a reproach to our father, our heavenly father. You become a reproach. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5, and Proverbs chapter 25, verse 13. You become a reproach. You become a reproach. He that gathered in summer is a wise son, but he that slipped in harvest is a son that caused reproach. You become a reproach. That causes shame, rather. You become a reproach. You become a reproach. So you see, if you don't win so, you are a reproach. If you don't take advantage of every season God creates to bless you, you are a reproach. You make God to be a liar. If this season is a season of harvest, ask God, what do I do to enjoy your harvest? And I told you he must enlist you into a field where you go and preserve harvest for him. If you bring souls for him, he will bless you. He will reward you. So, but when you don't bring souls, you don't get rewarded. When you don't get rewarded, you make God a liar. It means you bring reproach to his name. Some of you are here, you are looking for a job. Go to the street and begin to win souls and bring to church. As you enlist yourself, you are working for him. As you work for him, he will also answer you. Don't bring reproach. Stand to your feet.